You know, sometimes it can be really depressing having a weather-dependent hobby like astronomy. So, here are 10 tips for things you can do when it's raining. Also, uh, some subscribers have mentioned that the music in my videos is a little bit too loud, so I'm going to try and keep it down for you guys. So, a bit of warning, the intro is about to start, it's a little bit loud, you might want to turn... Okay, so we've had a pretty good run of weather over the last little while in Australia because of the drought. Uh, the farmers have been screaming out for drought relief and I think they've got it because it's practically flooding out here. Um, so now that the farmers are sorted, who will think about us, the poor astronomers? Well, I've got 10 tips for you, for things you can do when it's raining. Now's the time to clean your cameras, make sure there's no dust on the chips, maybe collimate your telescope if you've got a laser collimator. Do all those maintenance things that you put off when you're actually out doing acquisition work. Embrace your inner tinkerer and tinker with your equipment. <laughs> Tip number two, plan your seasonal targets. Check out with your planetarium app what's coming over, uh, especially in the early evening when it might be better for you to actually get out and do astronomy. And see if there's any targets that you are planning for. Try and work out what your session is going to be like whether you're going to do several runs of narrowband or whether you're going to do colour or luminance and colour or whatever. Plan out the session so you're all ready to go. You can use the Framing and Mosaic Wizard in Sequence Generator Pro to actually frame the shot with the equipment that you're using. So you know exactly what the field of view is going to be. Get things like that ready so that when you are out on a good night, you're ready to go with the next shot. Tip number three, read a book. I've got several great books. In Australia, we've got the Astronomy 2018 or 2019 or whatever year you're in uh, to help you plan things. I also like the Annals of the Deep Sky series, which is a tome of information for everything you can see in the night sky. They're only up to sea at the moment, but it's gonna be a fantastic series. Or you know. Process your old data. You've probably got a stack of old data sitting on hard drives from early on before you knew more about post-processing. You can go back and reprocess some of those old images as long as your acquisition data is relatively okay and you're happy with it go back and apply those techniques you've learned recently to older images or if you have a look through sometimes i even find data that i haven't processed at all because i was taking a photo of something before i was doing something i was planning or something like that Tip number five, learn new tricks. Uh, I especially love YouTube, of course. There's a bunch of YouTube tutorials out there for learning new things about post-processing. I like the Astro Imaging channel, I like photographing space, and there's a bunch of other YouTubers I follow as well. Things like calibration frames, noise reduction, star reduction, PixInsight tutorials, all that sort of stuff is really good for doing on a rainy day. Tip number six, you can use this time to take dark frames. So plug in your camera and do a run of say 30 frames in 60 seconds, then two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes if you go that long. Stack those and then you'll have a master dark for each one. So you'll have a, a dark stack for 60 seconds, a dark stack for 120 seconds and so on. And then you've got your dark frame library sorted out for the rest of the season. So it's a good thing to do on a rainy day. Check the forums. Uh, here in the Southern Hemisphere, we like ice and space, and in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, cloudy nights. It's a great way to get online and just talk to other space people. And you can also see what they're taking photos of at this given time. And that means you can look for targets that others might be seeing, and you might have them available to you as well. So it's a good way to explore for what's up in space. Or you can just, you know, join the forums and argue with people. Brush up on the space news. There's always stuff going on in space. Has Elon Musk said anything ridiculous today? Are the ISS astronauts still stuck in space after the Soyuz capsule 
had a launch failure. Check out the news and see what's going on. Why not start a university course or an online astronomy course? I'm doing one with Swinburne at the moment and I'm getting my astronomy degree. That's why the videos have been a bit few and far between. Uh, but at the moment I'm writing an essay on black holes and gravitational waves and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, that way you can become a qualified real astronomer and work your way up to one of the most poorly paid professions you can get. Uh, it might be poorly paid but you could be the most interesting or least interesting person in the room at parties. If life gives you lemons Become a storm chaser photographer. Maybe try your hand at lightning photography, which shares some similarities to astrophotography. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.